Hey friend, welcome to my channel, Kareen Alude, where we talk about everything and I'm Kareen Alude. If you're not yet part of the Friendship Circle, please be sure to like, subscribe, and join the Friendship Circle. If you're already part of the Friendship Circle, please be sure to turn on your notification bell so you can always know when I post a new upload. Now let's get straight into this very interesting video. We are talking about the soul. So there is a form and some level of spirituality that is required. So we want to talk about soul ties and just the danger that come with it and basically make you know casual intimacy popular and seem like it's a normal thing and not saying that there's anything so what is a soul tie someone might ask a soul tie can let a person influence or manipulate you it's like a spiritual connection between two people even if they are unaware they are doing so it can also sabotage your future relationships and there are such a thing as healthy soul ties and unhealthy soul ties okay so a healthy soul tie will make you feel more confident and empowered you'll be on a healthier journey you'll be smiling more when you're with that person there's no like toxicity and the relationship or marriage or union and there's a genuine sense of lightness in the relationship you don't feel heavy you don't feel bogged down you don't feel obsessive compulsive sitting by the phone waiting for them to call and maybe they're texting other girls and all that there's none of that stuff that you're feeling with a healthy soul tie really makes you want to be a better version of yourself now, an unhealthy soul tie, on the other hand, can lead to obsession, addiction, entrapment, or manipulation. Or they'll get high or they'll be in a certain substance because they are so unattracted to the person that they have to be under some substance. Or maybe the person makes them so unhappy or depressed that to stomach being around them, and it's not just women, it's men too. Those soul ties affect women on a larger scale. Uh, scale we're going to talk about that scientifically but yeah a lot of couples will party together and then create these obsessions with each other be very violent and very manipulative with each other and it's just if you're in a relationship where you guys like take turns manipulating each other and there's like substance use where in the beginning because the thing with soul ties it'll start to make you feel like what you're doing is not a big deal there's no issue and you start to make kind of these excuses for what's going on but if before in the past you would have never been that person to drink or get high or try this shrooms or whatever y'all know and then you see that slowly hey I'm starting to do this this is not something and you're making excuses for and stuff you might be on a soul tie because negative toxic soul ties will make you try things that goes against you as a person that you said you would never do and it's not just substances it could be anything there's fatal attractions and we can talk about that too where there's couples that go and kill together there's couples that go and traffic together that sell drugs together like a whole bunch of stuff you know what i mean so it's like it's not just limited to that so psychologists refer to this concept as mind links and soul links or mind control and in Christianity, the scripture mentions a similar concept, which portrays the knitting of souls together in becoming one flesh. That's where you get the Bible verses of how they said someone had sex in the Bible was basically, and he knew her and she knew him and they became one. That's usually the Bible verse, because whenever you're having intimate intercourse with someone you do become one your fluids are interacting with each other it's and then if people still don't believe that concept let me just break it down to you in, in simplest terms when you're having intercourse with someone and they say you don't want to get pregnant he has to put on protection correct correct if you're having intercourse with someone you don't want to catch a disease he has to put on protection if there wasn't an exchange of fluids and energy and chemicals then why do you need protection if it's just casual you got to understand the chemical links that come in the sperm just to be we're all adults here okay i'm assuming but if a, a seed from a man and the seed from you Connecting together can be so powerful that it creates life. You who's listening started off as a seed. This is the chemical that was transferred from another human body to another human body. And look what it created. It created all of our political leaders. It created all the great scientists we have, all the celebrities that were your faves. Everyone, humanity came from a seed 
came from this act. Do you not see how sacred it is? And to downplay this act as the transference of energy as being something so simple to be taken so lightly just means you are in denial and you're finding excuses to have fun with something that is so serious. And that is what the world is doing. And when you speak on this, you can't even just speak on this on a spiritual term. You have to really get scientific with people because the world has trained us to see this transference of energy as something so simple and it seems like the world thrives on chaos and having so many soul ties and transference of energy creates chaos there's been scientific links and i'll put as many links as i can in the description box there's been scientific links that shows you how how, how having too many partners can create mental illnesses and people can create a sense of loss of identity, especially when they do studies on people who are street walk workers, you know, women, ladies of the night and men of the night. When they do work on them later on in life, they do see that those people typically have so many demons that they're fighting split personalities identities because there was so many transference of energies and chemicals in their body that they can't even keep track that they kind of just lose their mind over time or have to be on a substance to get over the thought of all of the activities that they were participating in and this is a very interesting topic but there is no such thing as casual intercourse okay contrary to the popular belief intercourse is tri-dimensional it is a tri-dimensional experience, spirit, soul, and body. It is not ever just a casual physical act with no emotional or spiritual effects. In fact, anytime you have intercourse with a person, you bond with them, okay? That's why, and if you wanna deny this as well, let's talk about children. Why is it important for mommies to have skin-to-skin -skin contact with their newborns when they are born? Why is it important? Why do doctors put them on your chest? It is necessary for a child to have that skin-to-skin -skin contact. Why many people push breastfeeding and why God even designed our bodies to breastfeed because that is the bonding moment. The chemicals of what you eat is being transferred into them. That's where that soul tie come in with your children. They're looking into your eyes as they're breastfeeding. You're looking into theirs. They're smiling at you. They're touching you, playing with your hair. You're touching them. And there's this connection between mother and child, which is why they say children who do not necessarily go through the breastfeeding process tend to have more emotional problems later on in their adult life. Of course, there's always an exception to every rule, but that's usually the case. And there's usually attachment issues. And this is why also newborns in the NICU, and come on, I have many pediatric friends that testify to this. So it's not just a wonder you see on social media, but in the NICU, whenever there's a premature baby that is there, they if they have a sibling or a twin, they put them in the same incubators together. They touch each other. I said this in many videos, they tend to heal from the touch. So imagine being on top of someone or someone being on top of you if I may be visually clear and there's sweat exchanging there's bodily fluids exchanging there's kissing there's looking into their eyes touching their hair holding their hand laying on their chest and then having pillow talk after how can you not say that the bond is not as strong but still defend the bond with children do you guys see the the issue here or the parallel <laughs> So the world may tell you otherwise, but the truth is, as humans, we do not get the power to pick and choose who we bond with when we physically get in contact with them. It, it does not work that way. If you're around someone long enough, toxic or not, somehow they will rub off on you. It, it's, 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 it's just natural. That's just how it is. The world says that intercourse is good fun natural and healthy and that is the truth the problem with the world's intimate gospel or sexual gospel is actually that it doesn't con affirm sex enough it underestimates and even denies the power of intercourse reducing it to a single dimensional physical experience and on top of that it doesn't understand the ramifications that intercourse has on the soul and spirit of the people involved so there's a doctor his name is dr daniel amen and he wrote a book and his book is called change your brain change your life and i really want you guys to go purchase this book is if you're a nerd like me and love to read go read it he breaks it all down from a doctor standpoint from a scientific standpoint so that even if you're not into that spiritual you want the facts here are the facts okay 
Now I'm going to read direct quotes from his book. He says, whenever a person is sexually involved with another person, neurochemical changes occur in both their brains that encourage limbic emotional bonding. So limbic bonding is the reason casual intercourse doesn't really work for most people on a whole mind and body level. Two people may decide to have intercourse just for the fun of it, yet something is occurring on another level that they might not have decided on at all without the their knowledge it's all subconscious intimacy is enhancing an emotional bond between them whether they want it or not one person often the woman is bound to form an attachment and will be hurt when a casual affair ends one reason is is usually the woman who is hurt most is that the female limbic system is larger than the males this is why men can casually have intercourse and feel nothing but you you want to play with fire and you want to be a man too and boss when physically you were not designed that way physically scientifically physiologically our bodies our brain as women we're not designed that way we create that and a lot of us are just hurt and broken which is why i always stress taking therapy finding yourself, fixing yourself. Don't be too hard on yourself for the mistakes that you made in the past. I have forgiven myself long ago, but a lot of us use intimacy to fill a void that we have in our wounds to make us feel whole or to get that physical attachment that we did not get, or maybe to get over an ex or to hurt them or to get over somebody else, or maybe you're bored, or maybe you feel lonely, like you're the only one who's not married, who doesn't have this, so so let me go fill this void with whoever I find or as a distraction, whatever the reason is, you have to be honest with yourself with why that is and why you trivialize intercourse or maybe social media and celebrities movies that we see often encourage this type of behavior but we're not seeing who's the directors at the end of the day is men who are the screen writers it's men men create these movies to kind of make it seem so trivialized because that's their main goal in life is to have intercourse with women so they try to popularize this as much as possible and make it seem as okay as possible so that they can get your goods it's in their greatest interest to make sure that all women see intimacy as a casual thing so keep that in mind when you're being influenced by even the music because who writes these lyrics for your faves okay even your faves writes these lyrics because we knew that intimacy is so taboo it sells is this I can't even say it's taboo anymore in this day and age because it is so pushed in our face but a lot of young kids grow up being influenced by that thinking it's the norm and trivialize it and everybody's afraid to talk about it for fear of being canceled or being called sex negative or being called judgmental or critical nobody is talking about the long-term damage that happens to majority of people who participate in this you who's commenting who might be older an adult who be like hey I'm sure of my experience I don't care about the soul ties I want to do this because I want to do it I have no damages no mental illness or whatever that's great but you cannot go and then promote that to a younger audience and not just that you cannot choose to not enlighten a younger audience of the potential danger that happens with majority of people who participate in this you, you get what I'm saying just because you have been smoking weed for instance for 10 12 years and never graduated to a bigger substance you cannot negate the fact that some people do use it as a gateway and some people do end up trying more chasing a bigger high you know it happens you know and that's where you cannot then go introduce someone to it or casually participate in it with people or promote it without considering that everybody's not in the same mental plane or journey as you so here are some signs that you are in a negative soul tie Number one, you feel connected on a deeper level. You feel like, hey, this is the biggest type of um, connection I've ever had. Having a soul tie means you are bonded on a deeper level at the level of spirit. You feel spiritually connected to it. And what I can think of that is um, food. They call soul food that because you feel it spiritually as you're eating. <laughs> There's music you listen to. They call soul music because your body can't even. It's like a deeper meaning connection with it. There's these names, even alcohols, calling them spirits. You know, all those things. Listen, 
you feel it. It changes who you are internally. That's why some people dance when the food is so good, they start to sing and dance. Or when the music is so good, they can't help themselves. It's a vibe. So people can give us that same feeling as well. Number two, you may feel like they complete you. Without them, you don't know what life would be like. Where would I be without this person? I don't care how bad it is. This is my person. I'm going to stick with them. They complete me. This is a very dangerous ideology because you complete yourself as well. Whatever being that you serve completes you first before anyone else completes you. Number three, your relationship feels unique or one of a kind. It feels different from all the other relationships that you see online or from other people. Oftentimes when it comes to soul ties, they are unique and offer an element of newness. You look for feelings and experiences you've never had before. Maybe y'all travel all the time. Maybe they introduce you to some new substances you've never felt before. Or, or maybe just give you a feeling that you've never felt before intimately. A lot of women, hey, guys, not to hurt y'all feelings, but studies have shown and polls have shown that a lot of women been having intercourse for like 12, 50 years even with men and have never had an orga or climax, let me say, in all those years from a man. They've had to do it themselves, the climax. And maybe they meet someone that actually get it right. So a lot of women do fake it. And when they get it right, they be so hooked, they not letting him go. They don't care if he's a, as a serial killer, whatever. They're like, nope, I ain't get a good one in so long. I'm sticking to this one. And that's that. This, this is a feeling I've never had before. The passion is so intense. They ignite a fire in you. You're not bored around them. Maybe it's the fights. You're addicted to the high of the fights and the toxicity and making up there's couples that literally fight just to make up because it's so much passion there number four they showed up at a significant time perhaps this person showed up at an exact moment you needed help healing or expertise they have to offer ask yourself what was going on in your life when you first met this person and what did they offer you what was going on in your life when you decided to finally give that guy a chance at what low point were you were you dealing with a death were you grieving, maybe not passing a, an exam for school or whatever the case is, at what low point or even high point? Sometimes you meet someone traveling and you feel like, oh my God, you know, it's such a high point. You're traveling, you feel great. And you're like, this is magical. Maybe you met someone at a magical setting, like a wedding and you were fantasizing a wedding. So you glamorize this person in your mind. You have to understand the circumstances that you meet people in too, to determine whether this relationship relationship is healthy or not. Number five is a part of you feels like it's missing if they're not in your life. It goes in to say with number two, like they, you feel like they complete you. Like whenever this person's not around, if you're going somewhere, it's like, I don't want to dress up. What's the point of doing this? They're not going to be there or this and that. Like you, you just feel empty without them. Number six is your mind is flooded by the thoughts of them. Another common symptom of a soul tie that you can easily recognize is not being able to get them out of your mind, out of your head. Most people who are spiritually linked can communicate telepathically. You might find yourself finishing the person's sentence or calling them when they're already about to contact you. So number seven is you feel trapped in a relationship. You feel like you can't escape. There's nothing you can do. And this can be in a toxic side. Maybe you recognize recognize it's a soul tie or maybe you you're not really soul tied like as in terms of you're not feeling obsessive about them but you feel like a loyalty to them to not leave them although you know they're bad for you you so considerate of their feelings you're taking your time maybe they're not good for you spiritually maybe it's not an ideal relation maybe it's someone else's husband or someone else's wife maybe it's 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 uh someone that you're just not supposed to be talking to and for some reason you try to do right and you you just can't you can't you can't leave you feel trapped you feel like you have to be there for this person and not put yourself first and you put them first so number eight is you change for the worse because of them you every bad habit that they have you attract you become that way think of how you were before when you met them were you energetic happy going out more a lot more cooler with your friends and closer with your family now are you a little bit more distant with your family 
Are you not as cool with your friends? Do you start seeing issues with your friends? Do you see you're not smiling as much? Maybe you gained a ton of weight from depression and eating out late with this person all the time and you can't drop that weight and you're no longer healthy. Like I said, with the people that drink all the time when they're with their partner to live it up. And for some women, sadly, it's just you're maybe you're not married yet and you're not ready for kids, but you keep getting pregnant by this person and you keep taking plan B's or you're on birth control or whatever that's messing up your health, making you lose hair, have cancer, lose weight, gaining weight or losing too much weight. And you know, this is bad for you. Like, Hey, I don't want to be on these things. I don't want to do that. But for some reason you just can't stop. These are all problematic. Number nine is you take on the negative traits of the person that your soul is tied to and carry their offenses, whether or not you actually agree with them, which is the same thing as eight. Like you don't necessarily agree with them, but if they talk away with people, you talk that way too. If you have one rude friend who has an RBF, a resting biage face, <laughs> and you start to see, you start to be sedity too. You start to look at people weird too. You start to like be offensive in your mannerisms because this is the person you hang around, they rub off on you. It's the same thing with your spouse. If your spouse is always negative, complaining and bitter and depressed in the house, you start to be depressed too. You start to be complaining too. You start to be bitter too and you start to not like people too. And I noticed this, if you and your spouse, all y'all do is just talk about everyone bad around you, you start to inherit these traits and offenses and then don't even see it until it's too late. Number 10 is they provide an escape. When we are with the person, it feels like we are escaping our regular life and just getting away from it all. This can be unhealthy if we are already one in a relationship, this is for my people having affairs as we can often put off solving problems within our own relationship by distracting ourselves with someone else. And this is dangerous if you are in a relationship to try to escape. I know several people that got married to escape their family life, their home life. Okay. Marilyn Monroe did it. You know, her first marriage was to escape the orphanage. And then you have an attachment to this person because you start seeing them as a savior or someone that brings the joy that you were missing. This is how a lot of affairs start leading to more pain down the road. And not just that, this is how a lot of people end up in marriages that they regret in the end. Cause it's like, what were you escaping from? For women, are you escaping from the fear of getting older and not being married? Men, are you escaping from the fear of being the only guy amongst your friends who doesn't have a wife or kids? Or are you escaping from the fact of, hey, everybody else is smashing a new girl every week. I have to live up to that standard. So let me do this. Like, what is the real reason? Ask yourself. And really, once you know the real reason, self-reflection is key. Like someone always comments this <laughs> on my uh, videos. Every time I do these therapy videos, self-reflection is key. Once you know what your problems are or why you're doing something, Thing, it's easier to solve them but if you're still clueless in denial watching the videos with rejection not doing the work you're always going to be in the same place and i'll leave this with albert einstein's quote insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result okay so we have to start looking at things differently if we want to be healthy living life happy minding our business and glowing we have to do the work internally and cut off those soul ties and really take control of our lives i love you guys so much feel free to comment your thoughts below don't forget to share with a friend and comment below the ways that you get rid of a soul tie but i know the number one way is to just be self-aware because once you're self-aware it's hard to ignore and you will keep seeing the red flags until your mind is just so uncomfortable. You'll find any ways necessary to get out. I love you guys so much. Thank you for tuning in until next time.